So what I want to show you in this video is how to quickly set up an Azure virtual desktop uh, environment. Now to do that, the first thing that we're going to need is to create a resource group, which is a place for all the resources that we create to live. Now we can do that by going over to the left and scrolling down until we find resource groups and then go in and create a new resource group. Best idea is to make sure that you name it um, something short but also relevant. In this case, I'm gonna call it AVD and I will position it in this region. There'll be no tags and I will just go in now and create that and because it's effectively just a container, it'll only take a, a moment or two for that to create. So that is now uh, done. The next thing we need to go and do is to create a virtual network. So this is the network in which the uh, virtual machines are going to live and it needs to be in existence before we go around uh, creating the virtual machines and the pools. So again, go to virtual network, select to create. Now, because we've created the resource group just prior, so there we go, we select the resource group we just created to put uh, the Azure Virtual Network here into that. We're going to give this uh, a name, so I'll call this AVD VNet, all right? And again, we can select a range of different IP addresses if we want, we'll just leave this as the default. Uh, again, we can modify the securities, but leaving that as the default, no tags, review and create. So once that's reviewed, I'll push the create button. And again, uh, because this is a simple uh, network, it won't take us too long to basically go and do that. So, so far the prerequisites have been an Azure tenant with a subscription, uh, a global administrator or an appropriate administrator to log in and create all these resources, then create a resource group and then create a virtual network. Uh, and that is going to be used for all the um, Azure virtual desktop resources. So see that has now completed. So again, if we go back to home, got our resource groups and you'll see the one we just created. And in there at the moment uh, will be uh, only be our, uh, should only be our virtual network. Hasn't appeared as yet. So there it is, do a refresh and there's our virtual network. Now, once we have that, what we need to do is go out and select Azure Virtual Desktop. And again, you can just go up here and do a search as well uh, for that resource. So let's select that as your virtual desktop. Now, the first step in this process is to create a host pool. So again, we can go over to the host pools on the left here, go into create, and this will step us uh, basically through the process. So again, we are on the same subscription. We've already created the resource group, and now we're going to go in here and give the pool a name. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this uh, pool one. Uh, we can locate that pool uh, in whatever region. Generally, the best advice is to keep your Azure Virtual Desktop uh, environments and resources in the same region, just makes it a lot easier. And what I'm gonna do now is select the pool type. Now I can select a personal or a pooled. In, fact, in effect, personal is generally one machine or one virtual machine per uh, one login. And in this case, I'm gonna select pooled which means that uh, it's going to machines that multiple people can access, so a multi-user style environment. When I do select that, I've got the option to select, okay, well, how am I gonna deploy this? Is it load balance? Is it gonna be breadth first or depth? So breadth uh, basically means I would add a user to the first machine. When the second user came up, I would then add another machine and add another user and again, expand it out. The other option is depth first, and that way I can define, you know, I want three users on the first machine before you create the second machine. So again, you can choose either one of those to suit your needs. The maximum number of users per session, in this case, I'm just gonna keep it uh, simple at two. Now, we are prompted in this space to go in and create our virtual machines that will live in these pools, but we'll leave that for uh, this point. Same thing with the workspace, you can do all this um, together here, but we're going to move on and uh, do that a little bit later. We're not gonna enable the diagnostics, and again, no tags here, and it will then do a review. And once we've done that, we can go in and create the host pool. So think of the host pool as a grouping of the virtual machines that will be shared amongst uh, the users in your environment. So we need to create that pool where those virtual machines will live, and that will require determination, is it going to be breadth, is it going to be depth, how many machines do we want, maximum session limits, uh, basically 
which is what we've done. So again, this uh, creating of our session host shouldn't take uh, too much longer. And we've seen that has again now completed. So let's go back to home, go, go back to our virtual desktop environment, go to our host pools here and refresh the display here. And hopefully in a second or two, we should see that. So here's our pool now. So if we go in here and select it, all right, you can see that at the moment, we've got no virtual machines in here, no sessions uh, as yet. So now that we've got the pool, the next thing we need to do is go and actually uh, put in uh, the uh, VMs in here. All right, so what we need to do is go in here and uh, select the option for session hosts. So this is going to be the virtual machines that are part of the pool. Going in here to go and add. All right, and you'll see it's already pre-completed those initial steps, nothing to complete here. So I go next onto virtual machines. The resource group is already completed, so we get a name uh, prefix here. So I'm just going to give it uh, a name prefix. So that will prefix any virtual machine. So it'll be AVD dash, you know, PC1, PC2, and so on. Uh, the location, again, try and keep it in the same zone. In this case, I don't want any uh, availability options in there so that I can uh, basically go and, um, you know, make things a little bit cheaper. I can choose the image from a gallery or I can select um, or upload and use uh, an individual image if I want a custom image. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select a custom image, scroll down the bottom here, and you'll see that I've got a Windows 11 multi-session with the Microsoft 36 apps already pre-installed. So I will select that. Now I've got the option to select my virtual machine so I can change the sizes here, have more CPU, have more RAM, uh, do with it what I want. In this case, I'll just select two of these machines. And again, you can vary this if you want. It can be changed later on as well. I'll leave the operating system, operating system disk as a standard SSD, boot diagnostics as normal. Now down here, you'll see I want to select a virtual network and this is why we need to create it before. So I'll pick all that uh, up for us. And you'll see here that we have no public ports exposed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna access these machines via a client or via a web browser. So there's no need to RDP into them directly, but you can if you want, but best practice is going to be uh, that they are not exposed to the internet. Now down here, you'll see we've got our domain to join. Now by default, it's gonna to go to Active Directory, but we've now got the capability here to go to Azure Active Directory as well. So that means we don't need to have a domain controller. I will not uh, choose to enroll it in Intune. I can if I want, I just want to keep it clean in this case. So what I'm gonna use now is a uh, administrator account. So there's a local account for all my VMs if I do need to get back to them uh, in the background. So I'll just put a login and a password in for that. All right, hopefully I've matched those up. And you'll see here now, if you want to do any post upgrade customization of those machines, we can upload a template there, but we're good to go with that. So we'll go next, no advanced options, no tags, and we'll get the option to review and create. And then we'll push the create button and the creation and spin up of those virtual machines will commence and they will be placed inside the pool. Now, as you can appreciate, uh, doing that is going to take a little time, probably depending on how many machines you've got. Um, I expect this to probably take about 10 to 15 minutes. So what I'll do is I will leave that to go and deploy. I will uh, pause the video here and we'll come back uh, when that is all done. But roughly for this two machine environment that I've just set up here, it's going to take, like I said, 10 to 15 uh, minutes for that to complete. Uh, when it has completed, we'll come back and we will continue on. Okay, so that process has uh, now completed. So again, let's go back to our Azure Virtual Desktop and go into our host pool, uh, select the one that we created earlier. And what we should see in here, you'll see here there are two virtual machines now, but they're currently unavailable because they're still provisioning, spinning up, upgrading thanks to Windows 11. But if we select that, you'll see here that again, they've got that prefix and uh, they will become available shortly. So again, be patient with that. It takes a little bit longer to do some stuff on the back end, but we're confident that the virtual machines are there and are in, our, in the pool and they will come online uh, very shortly. Now, while we're waiting for that, what we need to do is go in and look at uh, some you know, assignments uh, for those machines. Basically what we need to do 
is to go in and um, you know add some users that can you know go in there and access that information. So we will find that capability under application groups here on the left. So let's select application groups and you'll see that there is one group that has been created for us. You'll note that it is a desktop group. So the application group type is a desktop, which means that it will support users logging in uh, to those desktops. So let's select that and you'll see in here there is an assignments option here on the left. And currently there are no users assigned to the capability to log on to those desktops. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and add two users here of uh, for our environment. So again, we'll select uh, the two users, including the administrator user that we're logged on, select them, and that will then add them into the assignment for that uh, desktop application group, allowing them to go in and have access to uh, those machines. Now, what we'll need to also do because of the way that uh, virtual machines work is we're going to need to allow them to actually log in uh, directly to the machine. So what we did here was allowing them to sort of log into the pool. We now have to sort of customize the requirement or the ability for them to log in to the actual virtual machines, right? So we've done the pool and now we have to sort of set them up to allow be allowed to log in to the desktop of the virtual machines. Now, the easiest way to achieve this is if we go back to our resource groups, all right, so select the option here for our resource groups, and here's our resource group where that is contained. Now, what I'm gonna do is go into access control here. So this is going to set up a permission. We're gonna add a permission in here, uh, and this will then be applied to everything in uh, within that group. This is a good thing about resource groups. We can apply this permission throughout. Now, the benefit of doing it at this level is that if any additional virtual machines are added to the pool, they will get this capability uh, as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to add uh, this access capability. So I'm gonna add a, uh, a role assignment here. All right, so I'll add a role assignment. And what I'm gonna do is just do a search for uh, a virtual machine, hit enter, and we should be able to uh, see uh, a restricted number of uh, settings. So let's make this a little bit easier. Let's go virtual machine user. Uh, and again, you'll see here, there's an option here for virtual machine user uh, login, right? So we're going to uh, select that, all right? And you'll see that it's going to be the role to allow a user to log into a, a virtual machine. And then what we're gonna do is select the members. Uh, so we're gonna add our two uh, users to that. Select that, you'll see that they are added. I will go next. Okay, and then I will review uh, and assign. All right, and that'll take a moment or two, and then we can refresh, and we should see that those uh, options are there now, All right? So again, uh, you just went in here, we did add, and what we're gonna do is add a role assignment. Okay, and if we put in here virtual uh, machine, you will also notice that there is a virtual machine administrator login. So if you do want the same users to have, had, have admin rights over the boxes, you repeat that process for the permission virtual machine uh, administrator login, which I will do in this case anyway, just to make it a bit easier so they can go in and install software and do things like that. So let's go in next, uh, review and assign, and you'll see that will appear down here uh, as well when that's complete. So what we've done is we've added the permissions for our users to log into vir the virtual machines and also to log in with admin privilege as well. So we can install uh, things like software and so on. Right, so with that done, let us pop back to our virtual desktop. Now, what we will need to do is to go in and create a, a workspace here. So let's go in, you'll see there are no workspaces. Now, a workspace effectively is what is going to be shown on the client app. So when we dial up our web browser for our remote access or the app on iOS, Android or Windows, we're going to need to have a workspace. Now that workspace can have virtual machines, but it can also have applications, right? So we can use this Azure Virtual Desktop environment to not only push desktops, but actual individual apps to uh, this workspace. So users can use a combination of both, and that's the concept of the workspace. So let's go in and create a, a workspace here. All right, so again, uh, you'll see the subscription noted. We've got the resource group already created. So what I'm gonna do is uh, basically 
just call this uh, work workspace all right and the friendly name I'll just make it nice and short same location as the previous you'll see here that I can also register uh, applications in here we're not going to do that in this video we just want access to the desktop so I'll leave that uh, as it is no uh, diagnostics and no tags so again we will review and uh, create that all right so let's go in and finish the creation of that so once the workspace has been created next step is we need to go in and assign our application groups into that space so effectively think of you know a user connecting to an environment what do we want to put in the environment they're going to see in our case we've only got a desktop application group but we could have multiple sets of these we could have multiple applications we're pushing into this uh, particular workspace remember we can have multiple workspaces targeted different users so i'm just going to go in here and add you'll see that i have the uh, one uh, pool in here it's a desktop application group i'm just going to hit the plus symbol uh, there over there on the right and we will select that that will update the workspace and include that desktop application uh, into this workspace which can then be pushed out to users so remember we can have multiple application groups both desktop and direct applications and we can have multiple workspaces in which uh, the users can you know, access and get um, you know access to those uh, resources so we see the pool is now in here it's now configured so our workspace uh, is uh, basically good to go so again what we need to do is go back to our Azure virtual desktop environment uh, let's go into our host pools and what we'll need to do here is make an adjustment to the um, RDP assignments because we're going to access this uh, via uh, a web browser so what we need to do here is we will need to basically go into the option here for RDP properties all right and go over to advanced on the right so what we're going to have to do is add an option in here to do that put a semicolon at the end of that and we're going to need to add some uh, specific text here and that text uh, basically is let me put that in there and then paste that in so it's going to be target is AAD joined colon I colon one. Now that's basically going to tell things like the web browser and some of the clients uh, that we have done an Azure AD joined environment. Uh, this is going to support things like single sign on from browsers and so on, make it easier for users. So make sure that uh, is in that RDP properties option there. I'm going to go in and uh, save that and update that. All right, so that has been uh, now completed. Now, if we go in and look at our pool, you'll see here we have two uh, machines here. Uh, again, some of the machines are still uh, upgrading and completing. So again, we'll give it a moment or two for uh, that process to complete. We want the status on these to uh, be green so they're both ready to go and then we can go into and log into uh, this environment. So let's give that a minute or two to complete and make sure both VMs in the pool are ready to go and then we'll go in and log into them. All right, so it wasn't long before the changes we've made there, the customizations uh, that we made uh, around that for our browser sessions has been accepted. Both machines are now showing as available. So our next step here is to go in and plug in the URL idweb.wvd.microsoft.com forward slash arm forward slash web client slash index.html. We now hit enter. Remember, we're logging in uh, as that same uh, administration administrative user. And hopefully what we should see is that we are now logging into the workspace. All right, so remember, the idea was to create a pool and then set up you know, an application group in that. In this case, we've set up a desktop application group and then uh, basically put that uh, application group into a workspace and then assign users to that workspace. And we can have multiple workspace and application groups and so on. But we've got this one here. All right, so we'll see that we have our desktop session here. So let us double click on that. We're now given the option to uh, allow access to our, some of our local resources. So I'm gonna leave all those set and select allow. And now we're actually going to uh, go in and log into the session. We're going to uh, log in as the administrator that set all this up. So we've got their details in there. All we need to do is to put in their password. 
And again, that password is obviously the one that is in Azure AD. So if logged into um, Azure with a domain user, uh, domain administrator, and we've used that same login to connect to the session as you see here. First time logging into it for this user. Uh, it'll take a moment or two to uh, spin that up, but our expectation is that we will see a Windows 11 desktop here ready to go logged in as that user. So again, the reality is that setting up Azure Virtual Desktop is, uh, there's a number of steps to complete. Uh, it's not a single button press, but it provides a lot of flexibility. So this has been a very simple, quick and easy setup uh, to demonstrate that capability. But there are lots and lots of additional options and you can, for example, connect to on-premises environments. You can do further security restrictions and control things uh, in a much uh, more locked down way if you really need to. But uh, at the end of the day, what we've done here, like I said, we started off and we created a resource group. All right, so we'll let that finish. So let's go back here and just do a quick uh, summary. So what we did is we went in and created a resource group first. The resource group was where all uh, the items were going to be placed for admin and security. We then went in and created a virtual network inside that uh, resource group so that we can connect our virtual environment to that. Then we went into the virtual desktop and created a host pool. The host pool is then the location in which we put uh, the machines that users will actually uh, go in and log into. Once the pool uh, basically has been uh, created, then uh, what we would do is we would go in and set up our application groups. Now, typically the most simple one is a desktop application group, but remember you can also have ones that push out just a single app uh, for the users to access rather than the whole machine. Uh, so in this case, we just did the desktop. Once we've done the desktop, what we actually did to allow us to log in the web browser, we went and set some permissions at the resource group level to allow us to log into those virtual machines uh, as a user. Then once we'd done that, we went into our, our workspace settings. We added those uh, application groups into uh, the workspace we just created. So that is what the user would see and all the resources. Once we have uh, created that, we again went back and had a look at our pool. We firstly made sure that the machines that were part of the pool were available and green, which they are as you see. Uh, and then we went into the URL and spun that up, selected the resource, and that then allowed us to you know, log into the virtual machine uh, as you are seeing here. In this case, again, um, as we noted, uh, we spun up Windows 11, and you'll see that it has also got uh, the Microsoft 365 app application group installed on it, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, uh, and so on. Now if we take a quick look here in the pool, you'll see that we now have our total sessions, active sessions in here, so we can drill in uh, to these and you know, get more information and display things and, and do all sorts of administration and so on. I'm not gonna go into that. The idea here was just to give you a quick overview of how to go in and set up an Azure virtual desktop environment uh, quickly and easily. So hopefully I've been able to achieve that and you have got benefit um, from watching this video. And for that, I say thank you very much.